was amazing. Thank you, Caleb. <laughs> well, good morning, church. It's good to be in uh, worship with you this morning, uh, whether you were joining us here in the sanctuary or online with our online community. Good morning to everyone. Um, My name is Sarah Pugh. I'm the director of worship arts here uh, that I joyfully serve with you all. Um, And it's good to be in worship together. Uh, Like I said, it's it's good to have neighbors to worship next to each other. Again, whether you are here or online, um, online community, we see you and we love you. It's it's nice to worship online too and have, uh, have that community going. So um, if you uh, look on our website, www.fumchurch.com, you'll find uh, all of our bulletins, inserts, announcements, uh, everything that's going on in the church. That's uh, really our central hub right now. Um, I do want to lift up one praise that we have um, regarding the bipolar ionizers. They have successfully been installed throughout the entire church. Um, So that is a praise. that we can breathe a little bit safer. Um, But we also do thank you again for wearing masks as you are comfortable and uh, just being flexible and um, understanding that things are changing, you know? Um, And we don't know where God is leading us, but uh, this is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad. And um, with that, I just think that, um, you know, this is the day that God has made. So today is the day that God has made. Today, we are the people that God has made. So we all come from all over the place, from different journeys, different uh, places, but uh, we are together in worship. So church, I invite you to stand and join us in our call to worship shown on the screen. God's glory is pouring forth from the heavens. Earth below receives the good news with great joy. The promise is sure and true that Jesus has come to show us the best of ways to serve God. By serving and caring for others, we truly serve God. Come, let us prepare ourselves for joyful service. Lord, make us ready for great service in your name. Amen. Amen. I invite you to uh, join us in our opening hymn, Many Gifts, One Spirit, number 114 in the hymnal.
Amen. For the giver and for the gifts, we praise our Lord. So let us affirm our faith this morning by uh, reciting the Apostles' Creed that will be shown on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we affirm our faith, let us sing this praise chorus, Bind Us Together. Church, you may be seated. So last week we started uh, our new sermon series titled You Are the Body. So uh, this week we are going to be picking up 1 Corinthians 12, verses 1 to 11, as shown on the screen. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed to let astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed, and no one ever can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit, to the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another the prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another variety of various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of the tongues. All of these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses.
Let all God's people say together, I am resolved. I am resolved. Amen. Thank you for that anthem this morning. It is, uh, it is good to be here, and it is good to know that uh, whenever we gather for worship, the Holy Spirit always goes before us, uh, preparing the way. Let's uh, take a moment now uh, and pray together. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh, fall afresh on me. Amen. A few years ago, I had an unexpected phone call. It was from a young man that I knew as a child in my first appointment. He was in elementary school when I served the church he attended uh, with his mom and dad and his older brother. Now, Betsy and I had kept in touch with his parents over the years, uh, Christmas cards and such. But the last time we saw him, he was like 12 years old. But he called me out of the blue one day, now in his early 30s, and he asked, Pastor Denny, would you officiate at my wedding? And I was a bit surprised by the call, but as we talked a little more and uh, discovered that he had moved and so forth, I told him I'd be honored, and we arranged to meet. So Betsy and I met with him and his fiancée. We met at a Wendy's restaurant over burgers, fries, and a Frosty. And eventually, our conversation turned to his faith experience and to his involvement in the church. And there was a long pause. And then he said to me, well, uh, we're between churches right now. To be honest, he said, we're a long way between churches. Now, I was surprised that they didn't go to church because when he was growing up, his family was in church every Sunday. And in high school, he played in a worship band. He was considering at one point going into youth ministry. When I asked him about this, why not church? He, he said, well, you know, all of that was a long time ago. And then he looked at me across the table as he dipped his French fry into his Frosty and ate it. He said, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian, do you? Well, I wonder, have any of you ever heard that question? Maybe you've said that. You don't have to go to church to be a Christian, do you? Well, there are many people all around us that would say, you don't. A survey conducted just last year by Gallup revealed that 83% of Americans identify their faith as Christian, but only 47% belong to a church, and only 19% are in worship on any given Sunday. 
And those numbers take into account that during this pandemic, more of us have been connecting to the church online. You know, it is true, as my friend said, that confessing Jesus as Lord is a personal thing. I mean, you you can't get to heaven on the coattails of your parents or your grandparents. And just because you're a member on the rolls of a church doesn't mean that you're a Christ follower. But here in 1 Corinthians 12, I think the Apostle Paul is making it clear that whenever you say Jesus is Lord, it is a personal thing, but it is not a private thing. It's personal, but it's not private. Professing faith in Christ, Paul says, connects you to the community of Christ. You are the body of Christ, whether you may recognize that or not, if you say, Jesus is Lord. Let's read this verse we read together last week from 1 Corinthians 12, 27, and just let these words sink in. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. As I was reading that verse this week, I was thinking about John Wesley, the one who started the Methodist movement back in England in the 17th century, and how he was so convinced In fact, one of the things that drove the Methodist movement was the necessity of Christians to be connected to one another. We can't keep on the path with Christ, he would say, without the help and support of other believers. Without the fellowship of the church, Wesley said, we're like individual coals pulled out of the fire. Eventually, we grow and The fire and the flame of love grows cold, and then we die, Wesley would say. Without that connection, we die spiritually. To stay connected to Jesus, it's important that we're connected to his body. It keeps the spiritual fire going in us when there are others around us also committed to Christ. And the love and support of our sisters and brothers, it's a gift. Many of us have experienced that. But as Paul reminds us here in this passage that Sarah read a few minutes ago, belonging to the body is also a calling. And the question we're returning to in this series is, what does it look like for you? to be the body of Christ now. What does it look like for you here in January of 2022 to be part of the body of Christ? Well, as we go through this passage, we see first of all that Paul is telling us that the Holy Spirit dwells in every person who confesses Jesus as Lord. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter what gifts you may possess, whether they're visible or behind the scenes. If you confess Jesus as Lord, he says, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. In verses 1 to 3, Paul writes this, now concerning spiritual gifts, or also some translate it spiritual things. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Paul is saying that the Holy Spirit is not a special gift just for a few of us. To confess Jesus is Lord, Paul says, 
means that the Holy Spirit dwells in you. There are no second-class citizens in the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit is at mu- as much at work in the lives of those who faithfully serve quietly and behind the scenes as the Holy Spirit is at work in those who are gifted to preach or teach, those who may have the special gift of tongues, those who have gifts to heal. If you confess Jesus is Lord, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And when the Holy Spirit dwells in you, when you are open to the indwelling Spirit that is in you as a follower of Christ, the Holy Spirit gifts you in a unique way to serve. As we continue in in this passage, Paul emphasizes that every manifestation of the Holy Spirit is valuable, and it's valuable to the whole body. Now, a manifestation, that's kind of a fancy word that appears later in this text, and it simply means that it's a way that the Holy Spirit is revealed in the life of the church. And how the Holy Spirit is revealed in and through you is valuable, and it's valuable for the whole body. Look at these next few verses. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in every one. Do you notice how Paul is balancing two ideas, unity and diversity? One spirit, many gifts, one Lord, many ways of serving, one God, many activities, one, many. The Christian life, it's not the personal property of a few superhero Christians. Paul lists numerous gifts countless ways of serving, many activities. And yet this list that Paul gives us in 1 Corinthians 12, it is not meant to be an exhaustive list because he would want us to see that there is no limit to the ways that the Holy Spirit might show up in the church at any given time. And in every place, In every time, the Holy Spirit is gifting every one of us to accomplish what the Holy Spirit intends to do in this place at this time. And here's the thing I want you to get this morning. The Holy Spirit has gifted you. Let's read this together. And maybe as you're reading it, you might want to... Turn so that the person near you can hear it well. Are you ready? The Holy Spirit has given you gifts. Yes, you. Let's say that again and say it a little louder where the print is bold. Here we go. The Holy Spirit has given you gifts. Yes, you. you. Not long ago, I, I came across this uh, little parable. Um, And it asked that we would just imagine for a moment that you search and you search for just the right gift for someone you love. Many of us have experienced that. You go through the stores, you page through the catalogs that arrive in the mail, you don't find it there. You go online and you browse many websites, but nothing seems right. You think about maybe something homemade and you wonder if they'd like it. Well, finally, you're you're settled. This is not only what the one you love needs. You, You just know in your heart that they will love it, that they will just appreciate it. And not only that, but they'll be able to use it and it'll bring joy not only to them, but to those around them. 
And so you choose the perfect box, the lovely wrapping paper, the ribbon or the bow or the decorations. You outdo yourself this time. And when you are finished, I mean, it is a vision. It is gorgeous. And with joy and excitement, at just the right moment, you present it to that person you love. And with a smiling face and a word of thanks and delight, they, they reach out their hands and they receive that precious gift. But instead of opening the gift, they turn away, they open the closet door, they put it on a shelf, and then they close the door, they turn back to you and they say, well, someday I'll open it, but not, not just now. Now, that's a very silly parable, because who would really do such a thing? No one under the age of 12, that's for sure. I mean, last weekend, we went to the birthday party for our three-year-old grand Ronan, you know, the one that was born on my birthday. <laughs> and when Ronan saw the gifts on the table, he couldn't wait to tear open the wrapping and see what was inside. And his mom and dad kept saying, wait, Ronan, it's not time yet. Ronan, wait, we're going to eat first. It was terrible. But when the ca time came to open the gifts, it was such a thrill for him and for all of us gathered there. Children love gifts. Oh, that you and I would be as enthusiastic as little children to unwrap and to use the gifts that God has so abundantly bestowed upon us. The Holy Spirit gives each of us something to do. None of us are excluded. And it is important that we do what the Spirit gives us to do. Why? Because those gifts, they are God's response to what this community needs, to what the world around us needs in this time at this place. You are the body. You are the body now. Let's read verse 7 of 1 Corinthians 12 together. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Paul's not only telling us that each of us is gifted by the Spirit, he tells us why the Spirit gifts us, and it is for the common good. These varieties of gifts, these ways of serving, these many activities, they are the Spirit working in and through us, an expression of God's love for the community. As I remember you, First Church, in my prayers, I am so grateful for the many ways that you have unwrapped and discovered the gifts the Holy Spirit has given you and how you are using them for the common good. When people ask me about First Church, I always tell them that you are such a loving and gifted congregation and I am not just being sentimental. On a daily basis, I have the privilege of witnessing your love in action. How you sacrifice for loved ones. How you lift each other up with care and prayer and acts of kindness and generous giving. How on Sunday morning, you extend hospitality and you offer your gifts to enhance our worship of God here in person as well as online. And you serve our neighbors near and far in many, many ways, and I could go on. And I rejoice in how the Spirit is showing up in and through you in this most challenging time in which we live. 
But as we dig into these words of the Apostle Paul, I also want to encourage you to continue listening to the Holy Spirit. For God's gifting you today in response to what is needed in this community now. Now the question we all ask is, so how do I know what God wants me to do? How do I discover the gifts that God has given me through the Holy Spirit? What does God want me to do now? Well, there are several ways to answer that question. Uh, there are some formal ways. You could take a spiritual gifts inventory, a helpful tool that would help you to discover what your gifts are now and how you might use them to build up the body. And we have spiritual gift inventories available if you... Uh, reach out to Tina Eaton, our director of discipleship. She can share those with you. So there are some formal ways we can answer that question. And then there are some informal ways. We can discern what God wants us to do today simply by listening to our lives. What are others saying to you? that make your ears perk up when they say, you know, I think you would be good at this. Or I think you have gifts for that. Often God speaks to us through those others around us. Or maybe there are some things that you feel particularly passionate about today. Needs in this community that you become aware of, needs in the world that make you feel like, I just need to do something about that, pay attention because the Holy Spirit may be moving in your life, gifting you for just that need. The late Presbyterian pastor and writer Frederick Beekner wrote a lot about how we can discern God's call in our lives. And one thing he said in this book, he wrote like 50 years ago called the alphabet of grace was this. He said, the place God calls you is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. Let's read that together. The place God calls you is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger me. I wonder, what is that place for you today? What is that place of your deep gladness, something that brings you joy, something that makes you cry when you experience it, cry and laugh at the same time? What is your deep gladness today? And what need do you see? The world's deep hunger that needs to be met. So back to my conversation with the young man that was preparing to get married. You don't have to be part of a church to be a Christian, do you? Paul answers that question for us, I think, in a most beautiful way, reminding us how important it is to recognize you are the body, and it's a gift. It's a gift that we need to continue to stay spiritual alive in this world. And it's also a calling. Beloved, God has gifted you. And God has gifted you today. Will you join with me now as we stand together and sing and celebrate that we are the church together?
We are the church together. Please be seated. Let's join our hearts now in a time of prayer. Oh God, we thank you for the gift, the gift of being the church together. We thank you that when we profess that Jesus is Lord, we are surrounded. We are surrounded by a great company of witnesses who join us in that confession connected to the body of Christ so that, Lord, we might receive support and encouragement. We might be held accountable. We might hear your call in a new and fresh way. We thank you. We thank you, God, for the community that we are and for the ways that we experience your Holy Spirit in our life together here. Lord, we pray for the fresh wind of your Spirit. A fresh wind in this season in which we live, amid all of its challenges. We open our hearts as the Spirit would seek to be revealed in and through each of us with the gifts that you give us. Teach us, Lord. Teach us to pray. Teach us to seek you through your holy word. Teach us to be listening for your presence in the joyful occasions and in those difficult times and all those in between. Holy Spirit, come and help us to be aware of you and be responsive to your call upon your church today. God, we join together in prayer when we worship because we believe in the power of prayer. And Lord, we we live in a world, we, we live in a community of such great need. A need that you know, Lord, far beyond what we can even comprehend. Lord, we pray for your peace. Your peace in our homes, in our community, your peace in the world. We pray for your healing in the midst of this pandemic where we are aware, Lord, of many who are still suffering with COVID and some who have experienced the loss of loved ones. We pray for your healing, Lord, your your healing too for those who are struggling in other ways of body and mind with mental health issues, in relationships. And Lord, we pray that you would use us, that we'd use our gifts, that you would use our personalities, that you would use our education and our wisdom. Lord, we surrender ourselves to you so that you could use us in all the ways you've gifted us to build up the body of Christ here and also to address the great need for your love in this world. Lord, we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. A few things to share with us this morning. I do, yeah. Right. Uh, well, once again, I join Pastor Denny um, in thanking you for joining us uh, in our worship this morning. Um, and as we are reminded of the spiritual gifts that we have, uh, we know that these are not gifts meant to be held onto. So, um, and that includes our tithes and our offerings. So again, I just, I join Pastor Denny and uh, the staff in, in thanking you for your generosity and how um, you all just so lovingly share those gifts, church. Um, you can also visit our website at www.fumchurch.com again. Um, if you would like to choose to give online, there are options to do that. Or if you would like to present your offerings and your tithes here, there are baskets out um, as you exit the, the sanctuary. Uh, so a few announcements that we have this afternoon. We are going to be holding our Rejoicing Spirit service. That is our once-a-month service that we have that is all-inclusive, a no-hush service um, where we'll sing and read scripture and uh, have a message. And it's just a, a sweet time of fellowship that we have. That is 4 o'clock over here in our green chair area, and uh, all are welcome here. Uh, if you are new to this church and you've been attending this church for a few weeks and interested in learning more or getting to know our staff, um, right after this service at 945, we're going to be holding our First Steps Gathering. Um, that's going to be downstairs in Fellowship Hall. Um, everybody, again, who has been new and just curious about um, our church and what we do and our ministries um, and how we serve here in our community, you are welcome to join us for a little bit of time just to meet the staff and ask any questions and uh, just learn about us. And then in a couple weeks as well, we are going to have a new members class uh, where we'll be studying our disciples path. Um, again, if you are interested and would like to take the commitment of uh, joining our church, you may uh, do so. If, you, if you've been attending or uh, attending online and just thinking that you would like to join us in the body. Um, so if you are interested in that, you may contact Tina Eaton um, at the uh, email address listed there. And I have the joy of announcing uh, two other special items um, that we have. Uh, the first one is that we are blessed to be welcoming um, an intern in our sound and media uh, ministry over here. His name is Zach Garner. Uh, he's over with the uh, live stream right now. Uh, he is hailing from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, so he's local. Um, his home church is Grace United Methodist just down the road. Um, and a little bit more about him. He's currently a senior at Lebanon Valley College, and he is working towards a degree in audio and music production. So he graduated from Cumberland Valley in 2018, and again, he's uh, a member over at Grace there. And additionally, uh, music is a very important and a very big part of his life. Um, so Zach is the principal violist at the Lebanon Valley College Orchestra. He has over 12 years of experience playing the viola, and uh, we are very excited to walk this path with Zach through your internship. So uh, let's show our appreciation and welcome Zach this morning. So part of Zach's responsibilities, um, he's going to be assisting us every Sunday morning throughout his spring semester. Um, and additionally, our, which leads into our second um, very exciting announcement that we have, um, that as we continue to enter these uh, new territories with our live stream um, and our online ministry and just... Um, fine-tuning some of our worship ministries. I am excited to uh, share that we will be making upgrades to our uh, sanctuary sound and media systems. Um, these are through God's generous um, designated giving and uh, professional expertise. So part of Zach's responsibility is that he's going to be assisting in uh, some of the installation in some of these, these systems. Now, you're not going to see them right away. Um, we are going to draw them out over a few weeks over... Um, 
from now until about March. And uh, we are entering into phase one. So this is phase one out of three phases. Um, and like I said, you may not see or hear anything right away, but we will be working uh, behind the scenes. And especially to train some of our uh, sound and media volunteers into entering the digital, um, the digital world. So again, if you are interested in learning about that, um, if you think you now would be the time that you wanna learn on a digital board, um, you can join me and the other sound and media volunteers. I will be with you all on uh, learning everything from step one. <laughs> this is new for me as well. Um, so if you are interested, please contact me, um, or please contact Roger or Jason or any of us, really. Um, so again, our, uh, our hopes are to continue this installation through March, um, all while providing our training. And a complete switch over to the new system will be happening around uh, April of 2022. And then phases two and three of this project are slated for the summer and then for next fall and winter into 2023. And uh, church, the timing of this is just amazing with this. This is, um, this is where God is moving. This is where God is leading us. Um, he has gifted every one of us and everywhere, just as Pastor Denny said, you don't know when the Holy Spirit is going to show up. Um, and God has been moving here, so we are following this. And uh, I invite you to join us in prayer uh, throughout this project. And we think that this opportunity is really going to be such an investment into our mission of uh, opening doors for Christ and one another and our community. So with that said, church, uh, let's close our worship and lift our voices in our closing hymn, Forward Through the Ages, number 555 in the hymnal.
haven't sung that one for a long time, but that is an amazing hymn. And why I find it amazing is that it reminds me that you and I, uh, we are part of something so much bigger than ourselves. And yet each of us as individuals is called at this time, in this place, equipped and empowered by the Holy Spirit to serve Christ and to join that great procession of those who've gone before us and those who will come after us. And what does that look like for you today? As you go forth, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may the joy of the Lord be your strength. Amen.